ideas that I had had that had been piling up throughout my entire life just came like crashing down and it, and it was like, you're gay. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Hannah. I'm Sadie. And we're not straight. And today we're going to talk about labels. So the L, the B, those are our labels. <laughs> we have other ones that we're going to go over. Um, the B means bisexual in this case. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but first, if you have any interest in seeing content like this twice a week on Wednesdays and Sundays and a little bit more frequently now that we're at home, <laughs> um, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. We post content like this. Yeah. On and Wednesdays and Sundays. On Wednesdays and Sundays. Yeah. Let's just repeat all of that four more times. Did you say that? Or? Yeah. Oh. I, I was laughing at myself because I was already repeating myself. Got it. Okay. <clears throat> cool. All right. Let's get to it. <laughs> yeah. We're going to do it interview style because we have different labels mm -hmm. and we identify differently. And so sometimes we have questions for each other about this and we know that you guys have questions too. So we're gonna kind of blend them together. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right, fire away. Fire away, great. <laughs> okay, so what was it like figuring out that you were a lesbian while you were with a man? Um, good one. <laughs> Lots of people have asked Ooh. this actually. Um, yeah, I think, so I'll give like a brief, um, a brief history, I guess. I, uh, growing up, I was considered myself straight. I was assumed that I was straight. <clears throat> it wasn't even an option to be gay in my mind. Um, the way that I grew up, I thought that being gay was weird. It was wrong. It was abnormal that people who were gay just needed to figure it out. And when I, like as like a teenager, I think I figured out like that's not really true. And I started to question my categorization of being gay as, or anything other than straight as um, atypical or whatever. And then, but I never thought that that would apply to me. I was always just like, man, that's like really sad that people get called those things. And I am embarrassed that I thought that, you know, and then like, getting older, like, I think it was a slow progress toward me being like, no, that's ridiculous. Like, it's very natural to be gay. Like, it's it's everywhere throughout history. Um, it's mm. just been rewritten as and recast as, like, this negative, you know, whatever. Um, all sorts of things. And I was dating a man, and I was, I mean, I, when I met him, I fell in love, and I was very much in love, and he was my he, he was gonna be my forever. Like I didn't wanna be with anyone else. I didn't want to be in love with anyone else and I didn't really think that I could for a little while in my, in my naive mind. <laughs> and I think that slowly over time, just like I had recast general non-straightness in my mind as not a negative thing, I began to like have this slow incremental growth toward realizing that maybe that might apply to me but it was so subconscious that I never even thought about it hmm. while I had originally thought that that was going to be my only one like my only love forever I think that subconsciously it kind of grew in my mind that I could open up to other possibilities of love but it was so slow and it was so gradual that I didn't even know that happened I didn't mm -hmm. know that my love had changed like at all it wasn't, I didn't behave differently. I didn't, I didn't think differently. It was just like a subconscious, like, I don't know, opening up in my mind. And so <clears throat> then when I really started to reflect on my sexuality and really kind of consider how I'd want to identify myself, when I started to consider, like, I don't think I'm totally straight. And then I thought, then in talking to you and having conversations with you about that and just kind of trying to work through that, like as my friend, thinking about like, you know, my sexuality and talking to you about yours, I kind of realized it was like a moment, like a switch flipped and I was like, whoa, could I have feelings for Hannah? And it wasn't like, 
it wasn't like I was like suppressing them or anything. Like it wasn't, or is it repress? It's like internal. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> I was pressing them. <laughs> I was pressing them. <laughs> um, so it wasn't like a suppression or repression or whatever of feelings. It was just like, I didn't, they just kind of like, like a door opened and I was like, whoa, this mm -hmm. could, this could happen. Not this could happen, but like I could love someone else. And once that happened, like once I thought about it and I thought like, I might not be straight and I could love someone else. It was like, it was like immediately all of the like subconscious, all of the like really mm. buried, not buried, but just like never surfaced feelings or like ideas that I had had that had been piling up throughout my entire life just came like crashing down and, and it was like, you're gay. <laughs> it was, it wasn't even, it was so weird. I like, people don't believe me. No one believes this. I don't even believe this. It's super <laughs> weird, but it's true. <laughs> I yeah. didn't believe it. I just have a hard time with it, but it was once I gave myself the opportunity to actually say, maybe this is real, then it was like, <laughs> everything in my subconscious, everything, every sign in the universe was like neon flashing sign. Like, it's true, you're gay. <laughs> like, thank God you finally <laughs> discovered it. <laughs> Which is probably why everyone, not everyone, but a lot of people that I told were like, yeah, we thought so. Um, it was like all the universe like confirming, like, don't worry, you got it right, finally. <laughs> you figured it out. Oh my god, can I <clears throat> tell yeah. them my theory? I have this theory that there are a bunch of little guys running around, like, doing work in our bodies. <laughs> we can come back to this later, but... Like, like they, like, run your brain, and they run your, like, mm -hmm. stomach and digestive system, and, like, all this. And they're on different teams, like, there's, like, the <laughs> liver team and the muscle team, and they all work together. <laughs> I'm picturing, like, the brain team. Like, Sadie's brain team, when she, like, was like, what if I'm gay? And they were all like, yeah! Like, high-fiving each other. <laughs> like, having an old party, because they'd been, like, shoving things in corners, trying to, like... They're, like, holding up signs, yeah. but I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. Does that make sense? Like, did I leave anything out? No, I think that makes sense. Um, could you talk about, then, what it was like with your like sexuality yeah this, that you talked about love yeah okay so that was like the love piece <clears throat> yeah that's important I think the other piece is yes like like physically like sexually like I once I considered that I might be gay it was all that was kind of like my main focus was figuring out, out if that was true mm -hmm. and in figuring out if that was true I started thinking about sexually and I wasn't I didn't think, and I never had these thoughts that I was like, I have to have sex with a woman. That wasn't a mm -hmm. thought that had ever occurred to me. And even when I thought maybe I'm gay, that didn't come into my mind. And I wasn't like, yes, have to right now. Like it wasn't, <laughs> that wasn't part of it, but I knew that I didn't want to be with a man. I knew that for sure. And that was the first, I think really definitive piece that I could point to and say, okay, this is, this has to be real because I don't feel comfortable being with a man sexually and I don't want that anymore. Like once I thought about it, it was like that, fl that flipped too. And, hmm. and I think that there had been, <clears throat> again, I think that there had been hints over time sexually too, that I wasn't into being with men but I just dismissed it because, I don't know, I didn't really talk about sex I was with just anyone. Gonna say. And so I didn't know. <clears throat> and I didn't know I was dismissing these ideas or these hints or anything. And yeah, I have a hard time with that because I, I think that makes me feel like I was dishonest throughout my whole relationship. But I, I wasn't. Like I, I was... It's not like I suffered through this relationship and I was like, oh God, this is so terrible. Like I loved being in that relationship with the man that I was with and I didn't want out of it. I wanted to marry him, but it was 
my experience was so isolated that I didn't have anything for mm -hmm. reference. And so I don't know. It was it was the truest experience I could have. It was all it was all I had to compare anything. I mean, I didn't have anything to compare it to, you know. So, yeah, you didn't talk <clears throat> about it with me. You didn't really talk about it with any mm -hmm. of your other friends. Um which is something that I have always done. Um so I just never brought up the subject with her really when we were friends. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting to think about the impact that had on your understanding of yourself and wondering if that would have been different had you been more open about that younger. Yeah. And like heard people echo back things to you. Mm -hmm. um, anyway. Yeah. It's super I think it would have been, but yeah. <clears throat> Dang. That's it. Okay, so then one final question, or maybe we can come back to this, but so then once we actually got together, was there like a period of trying to confirm or deny, or was it like you never looked back, that was, you were so sure, once you tried it out? Yeah. Um, I feel like there's a right answer here. Um. <laughs> no, no. I, re I, I really didn't look back. Like, it wasn't... I wasn't worried. It was so, it was so bizarre because it was such a turbulent time of emotions and things where I was ending a relationship, I was starting a new one um, shortly after and I it was a relationship with a woman who I and I'd never been with a woman before and so that yeah, I think it makes sense to think that that might be there might be some back and forth. I might be really anxious, I might be nervous, but I had so much peace like moving forward, I've never felt like we, ha I mean, we had some big arguments in the mm -hmm. very beginning and I was never, I was never like, Oh God, this could ruin it. I was like, well, we talk about it now or we talk about it in five years. Like we, we should just figure it out now. It wasn't like I felt, I never felt like I questioned whether it was going to work out or whether I wanted it to work out. Mm hmm <laughs> How many times can I wink in these videos? As many as you want. I Ross. probably have done it a lot of times that I don't know. That's okay. Funny. <clears throat> My question for you. I think I want to know, and a lot of people want to know, like, what does it feel like to be bisexual? I think, and maybe I can give a contrast. I think I just explained that I want to be, I am lesbian. I want to be with a woman. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not, if I were with you, I would want to be with a woman. And it seems like that isn't the case for you. So what, what's it like? What is it? <laughs> um, so to start off, um, being bisexual generally means that you're attracted to more than just the one gender. And I haven't ever dated someone who doesn't identify with as either man or woman so I don't know if I would consider myself pansexual um I haven't figured that out yet but I do know and I do have experience with male and female mm -hmm. relationships um and I think it has been really hard for me to even answer that question for myself largely because I didn't meet another bisexual person until like last year mm -hmm. um and so there was never really anyone to echo that experience back to me or anyone I talked to about it was either straight or gay and so neither of those really made sense to me yeah um all that to say <laughs> I think oh man I think I knew that I could be happy with a man when I was in my first relationship with a man um well, let me back up. I think I had a crush on a woman just after high school. Um, and that was the first time I considered that I might not be straight. Mm -hmm. So I had assumed I was straight, as many people do. Um, and then maybe had a crush on a woman. Kind of tabled that for later. <laughs> um, Is and it still on the table? <laughs> I have a crush on a different woman, but yeah, it's still on the table. Um, so tabled that. <clears throat> Got into a relationship with a man, and it was great. Um, fell in love with him. I, sexually, I guess, I'll just dive right into it, um, enjoyed that with a man. Mm -hmm. And 
felt like it was kind. It was all kind of foreign to me, and I think it was foreign because I had never experienced a male body. I just knew my female body, but I didn't think of that as like um, wrong. I guess. Yeah. Um, so that was good. I was like, okay, cool. Could be with a man. Check. Like, would marry him. Mm-hmm. You know, we can cut that. <laughs> but um, no, I think that's like. Yeah. I think that's important. I think. You're, it sounds like you felt, like, physically and emotionally comfortable in the relationship. Yes. And that you were, you were confident moving forward. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. I didn't, sense. I didn't really question <clears throat> anything with him, especially not, um, in relation to my own identity. I think I had an idea that I was bi, but that didn't affect my relationship with him, I don't think. Um, so, when the idea of maybe being with Sadie came up. I was like, ooh, okay, here we go. Like, it's go time, <laughs> little guys. Like, let's figure this out. <laughs> um, They're like, you're like, is she bi? They're like, yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're like, well, try it and we will tell you. <laughs> so then being with Sadie, um, it kind of felt the same. And I might get roasted over the coals for that because being (laughs) with Sadie in a holistic sense is nothing like anything I've ever experienced and is like the holy grail to me, the unicorn to me. Um, No, but seriously, and we can get to that later, but sexually it felt the same. It felt great. It felt like a little foreign because I'd never experienced it, Um, but made sense and was great. And Mm -hmm. so... I was like, whoa, there are people who really just could go either way with that. (laughs) (laughs) I think I'm one of them, and it's, I don't know how to explain it other than that. I think that makes sense. I mean, and I do think it makes sense to say that it felt the same. I think if you're in a relationship that you, based on your identity and based on kind of like your, the essence of your person, doesn't match. I think it feels, I think there's a piece of it that probably feels wrong. And yeah, I think that was, that grew to be true for me at some point. I realized that. Um, and I think it was actually really close to the, the end of the relationship. I don't think I figured it out until then. But it doesn't sound like that was the case for you. Like it felt mm-hmm. like it could be right either way. Yeah. And that, I think that. Although I'm not bisexual, it sounds like that makes sense to me. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm thinking about then how do you know who you're supposed to end up with? And I think about all of the other aspects of my relationship that weren't quite working Mm. with him. Um, But I don't think that makes me a lesbian. I think that means that we weren't a great fit for each other or timing wasn't right. Um... I that, that's true. Yeah, that it didn't work out, and everything is so much better with us, and we communicate better, and I think you treat me really well, and I think that that's what I want, and then the rest doesn't really matter, or the rest we figure out. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's good. Okay, one other question. So you've talked about being demisexual. Oh, yeah. Can you explain... And I think, I think I am too, but Mm -hmm. I think that you explain it really well. Can you explain it? (laughs) (laughs) Yes. So demisexual, thank you, YouTube commenters for introducing me to this term, which greatly encapsulates what I've thought for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, it is the idea that the sexual attraction you have for someone grows the more you get to know them. Um, and for me, that has kind of looked like... I'm not super, like, into someone sexually right off the bat, but I become slowly more and more and more connected to the people that I spend time with, and therefore, Mm -hmm. once I get to know someone well enough, the sexual attraction just comes with it, Mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter if they're male or female, the attraction grows. Yeah. Yeah. I think that is true in a slightly modified sense for me as well, like... I think that I am attracted to, I think that I find people physically attractive, but 
I would not continue to be attracted to someone if I felt like their personality wasn't also like compatible with mine or attractive to me. Mm. I need to be attracted to someone's personality. That's super, super, super important to me. And I think if I'm attracted to someone's personality, it's not that I, I find them more or less attractive. It's just that the attraction to the personality is, is like, like takes up like 80% of the space. <laughs> yeah. Physical attraction is like the 20% outside that. Yeah. Um, and so that has, I think I haven't felt like I can, I can see someone in a room and be like, wow, that person's hot. But <laughs> I do one of two things after that. Like I, or I have in the past. Um, I don't, <laughs> I don't do this now, but <laughs> unless it's Hannah. <laughs> Um, I will talk to them and determine, do I actually think this? Like, I have to have a conversation with this person and figure out, do I actually find them attractive or was it just a split second thing? Or do I find them physically attractive, but I wouldn't actually be attracted to them? Hmm. Um, or I like won't talk to them at all because I don't want to ruin it. (laughs) Like, Like, I just want to admire from a distance. Like, I I think you're like physically attractive and like, and I think you might be a terrible person. (laughs) that you might be a terrible person I just don't want to find out that like your personality isn't my style or whatever Mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that they're a terrible person it just means that I might not be connected to them you know I might want to distance myself from them after that (laughs) that's funny I have thought of it in a more like directly applicable sense like it's important for me in a sexual relationship to feel really emotionally connected to someone um and I think that for me that's like Well, like you said, that's like 80% of it for me. Mm -hmm. So if there's any sort of like distance or I don't know, like rift or miscommunication, like I've never really understood the concept of like angry sex. I can't imagine. I can't imagine that. Um, I think that breakup sex, breakup sex, that doesn't make any sense to me either. I know, and that's, I've never experienced it, but it doesn't seem like I would enjoy it because for me, that's yeah. such a big part of it is to be on the same page and to feel connected with someone um, that it wouldn't be something I would ever go for. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Yeah. So those are our labels. Yeah. <laughs> and that's kind of how we came up with them. If you have more questions or if there's something that we didn't cover, please leave it in the mm-hmm. comments. And if you like this video, give us a like. It helps us out a lot. Yeah. And other than that, we will see you on Sunday. Sunday. Bye. Bye. Or is it repress? It's like internal. I have no idea. One of them's external, one of them's internal. To be... Like, I was in love with him. How did I say this? The hair on the mirror. <coughs> Straight in me bonkers. God. <laughs> No, and you're gonna keep looking. Oh god, there's another one. Okay. Oh my god, I'm gonna start the whole thing over. (coughs) Whatever. And. Hey! Nice. Okay, I can see that. (laughs) Okay.